Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm James, working on our Balsa USA Stingray 120 build. So in the last video, I mentioned that I, my next step was gonna be to put the servos in the tail section of the plane for the elevator and the rudder. And that's what I was gonna do. But then I realized that I haven't gone over what servos I'm gonna use and how I chose them. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. So a few things to note here. One of them is that there are no specifications for the plane in the, in the manual in terms of the wingspan, the weight, um, wing loading, channels required, engines, and all that type of stuff. Usually in an instruction manual, there'll be a table with all that information, but there is nothing listed in the instruction manual for the Stingray 120. For some reason, I don't know why they didn't include it, but you can go to the website and the website does have the specs on the web page for this plane, which I did. And I used those specs to help me choose the right servos that I wanted for the build. And then another thing I wanted to point out here is that I'm relatively far along in this build. I know we've been doing this for a while, but I'm toward the back of my manual now. And I think I have, I don't know how many steps I have. I don't have too many left, but really I have about, you know, maybe two pages, a page and a half, two pages in this manual, which is about 30 pages long. So it gives you an idea of kind of how far along we are with the construction. So there's two things I look at or two phases in a, in a build like this. So you have the construction phase, which is doing everything that I've been doing so far, you know, uh, gluing the, all the parts together and sanding and all that type of stuff. And then once you get through the construction phase, you kind of move on to the assembly phase where you're, you know, you're attaching the sub assemblies and you're putting the electronics in and doing all that type of stuff. So I'm kind of at the end of this construction phase. So as I mentioned in the previous video and earlier in this one, you know, my next step is gonna be to cut out the bays for the servos toward the tail here. And I've been waiting to cover the bottom of the plane because I wanted to be able to get in here and work on them. So once I get these cut out, then I'll go ahead and do the final sheeting on the bottom of the plane. And the fuselage will be pretty much finished at that point. Okay. Oh, and if you're wondering, there he is hiding back there. Okay, so let me go over my servos that I chose and, and how I chose these particular ones. So a little correction from what I just said. Yeah, there are no specifications in the manual itself, but there are specifications on the box. I just realized that. So there are a short list of some of the specs here. There are some additional specifications on the website. And as I mentioned in the introduction videos of this build, the specs on the website don't match completely the specs on the box, but generally they're close to each other, so it's not a big deal. So in order to choose the right servo, I need to know a few things here. Let me grab my highlighter. So this is from the website. It's the info from the website. And here are some of the specifications that we need to look at. So first of all, I have the weight of the plane, which is right here, 13 to 15 pounds. And then right down here, radio equipment, four channels or six channels, depending on what you're doing. And they give us a torque setting of 70 to 100 inch ounces right here. So those are the two things that we're gonna need to make sure that our servos can handle. And then the other thing we need to note is the type of plane it is, which is gonna be, this is just a sport, sport model, sport plane. Which is important because the same size, like a 3D plane of the same size, everything else being equal, you're gonna need a lot higher torque or more powerful servos if you're doing 3D flying compared to your typical sort of just sport flying or kind of lazy day flying. You know, obviously, you know, what's, what's going on here is when the plane is flying and depending on the weight of the plane and how hard you're hitting those control surfaces, you need to have servos that can handle that stress. So if you're doing 3D flying, you're gonna need a stronger servo and a quicker servo typically than you would if you're doing sort of your typical sport flying. So you have to kind of keep things like that in mind. So, you know, this is a relatively big plane. You know, it's 83 inch wingspan, you know, 13 to 15 pounds. It's a, you know, it's not a giant scale plane, but it's a pretty decent sized plane. And this torque 
value over here, this requirement of 70 to 100 inch ounce of torque per your servos, that's a high torque servo requirement right there. So the one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be running six servos. I'm gonna have four servos for the, um, the elevator and the rudder, and then one servo in each wing for the ailerons, and then I'm gonna mix that and make flaperons out of it. So I'm gonna have four total servos for the control surfaces. And then the remaining two, I don't need to have the high torque servos because that's just, those are gonna be just for the throttle and the choke. So I had to purchase, I went looking for a set of servos that would meet this requirement. And then I decided just to pick up a couple servos that were just your standard servos for the throttle and the choke. If you're familiar with my channel and watch some of my videos, you may remember that I like using Futaba equipment. And in the past few years, I've been running or using this Futaba. This is, the, this is just a six channel T6J um, transmitter. And you know, it's a little bit on the older side now. Being electronics, you know, these things get old as soon as you buy them. But it, you know, I like this radio a lot. I'm probably gonna be upgrading here pretty soon to an eight or a 10 channel system. But for now, I'm gonna be using this. I'll be using this on the Stingray. And then to go with that, I'm gonna be using this Futaba receiver. And this is the R206GS. But the thing is, is when I was looking for servos for this, Futaba servos, and at the time of this video, the time of this build, I could not find um, the servos that I needed. I couldn't find them in analog. And I'm not sure that Futaba right now is making too many analog servos. They do have some, but not very many to choose from. And they did have a digital um, servos that would meet these specs, but I couldn't find them anywhere. I was searching all over the place. I just couldn't, couldn't find them. And so I decided, hey, you know what? I'm gonna branch out a little bit and broaden my broaden my horizons because I know a lot of people like high-tech servos and I've gotten some recommendations to try high-tech servos so I came up with these so I have two sets I have these let's call them ultra torque servos which I'm going to be using for the control surfaces and then I have these more standard two servos these are the um, HS 485 HB they call them a deluxe I guess this is just your standard standard servo for the throttle and the choke okay so i'm not going to get into a bunch of information on batteries right now but i did want to tell you sort of the voltage i'm going to be running at least for the electronics now the engine is going to be a little bit different but i'm going to be using this this is a um, nickel metal hydride battery high capacity this is a five cell and it's going to so this is six volts and i really like this battery a lot and this comes from Batteries America. They have this great website. You can go on there and basically get any battery you need for your, for your application. So I'm gonna be using this. This is gonna give me the six volts. And then I'll probably be using this 4.8. It's the same thing, but it's just a 4.8 volt probably for the, the engine and the, the ignition and all that type of stuff. So in any case, those are my two power sources. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this guy right here, which is the HS6045MG. This is my ultra torque um, servo. And I just got some information from the website to, for the specifications. So let's take a look at it and we'll compare it to the specs for the plane itself. So what I have here is I have my operating voltage range, which is a 4.8 to six volts. And then my torque range is 107 to 133 ounce inches and that is that covers what's required here for the for the specifications of a set of 70 to 100 um, inch ounce so that's that and then the weight of the plane that these servos are good for are is a 12 to 15 pounds and the flying weight of our guy is 13 to 15, so that's really good there. And then the last thing is they note, well, they have right here, obviously, it's um, for a sport plane. So now let's take a look at our standard servo. So again, this is the HS685HB Deluxe. And let's look at the back here. So this one's, you know, not import, as important as these other ones because they're not gonna be controlling anything except the throttle and the choke, as I mentioned. But here it has it, it shows you here, and it has the output torque at your different voltage rating. So at 4.8, it's 
it's 66.65 ounce inches and then at six volts it's 83.32 um, ounce inches and this is just your standard standard servo so i'm going to go ahead and pull these guys out and we'll take a look and see what comes in the box oh and then here's another thing to note is that at six volts it's showing the speed so it takes uh, 0.2 seconds for it to move 60 degrees that's um plenty good for me you know when i'm flying i'm flying sports planes or some scale planes i'm not doing you know circus tricks up there in the sky it's just not my style so this is plenty good for me if you're going to go with a digital servo kind of a comparable it would be um, faster than that in most cases but i think this is good enough for this plane so all right let's go ahead and pop this guy open and see what's in the box Here's the servo as it was shipped. And then they give you a little hardware package here. That's cool. So I'm not going to take it apart, but obviously the, the servo lever or the arm would be out 90 degrees out here usually. So we'd have to just adjust that once we get it in the plane. And it is nice that they have, it's a different color system than the Futaba. Here's a Futaba servo. And it has the um, Futaba has the white, red, and black. And the high tech has the yellow, red, and black. I think the red and black are the same. And the yellow is just um, what's equivalent to the white. But check that out if you're using these two different servos. I'm not gonna mix and match my servos. Like I said, I'm just gonna be using high tech for everything on this, but I am going to be plugging them all into and they are compatible with my uh, Futaba receiver and my, uh, my Futaba system. Let's pull our little hardware package open. Comes with a nice little Ziploc bag that you can reuse if you need to. They give you a couple different control arms or wheels here. Probably won't be using those. This is a nice kind of, this is a nice beefy one here. I like that a lot. And then they give you some screws and some of these little rubber grommets and these little bushings, kind of isolator type things. And of course, these are going to plug into the, you have these little mounting tabs. Let's see here. Those pop on like that. We'll get more into this when I actually put them in the plane, but then there's this little kind of bushing that goes inside here. If I can get in there with my fat finger, there it goes like that. And then of course you have your screws, which are gonna push down on that and kind of, so that isolates, it's like a little shock absorber, obviously. Cool. So let me kind of move this stuff over here and we'll compare it to our standard, your other dude, the HS685HB. There's that guy. Okay, and then let's see what's in the box. It's a little smaller package. Again, it comes with a nice Ziploc. That's nice. The Putaba stuff just has like a it's sort of like in a it's in a plastic little pouch but you have to cut it open and you can't reuse it but this is kind of cool so everything's about the same in terms of mounting it but if they do give you a nice set of control arms here there's a wheel there's a little this is this is nice it's kind of an adjustable you can adjust it in and out i think you can, you can put this on here and it will slide how you need it. That's pretty cool. All right, so there are the two types that I'm going to use. And of course, this is standard, so it should be a little bit smaller. Oh, it's about the same, same size. Yeah, pretty much the same size. I thought it would be maybe a little bit smaller, but okay. Or I should say I thought that the high torque one would be a little bit bigger because this is your standard. All right, so now let's go ahead and just kind of get these on the receiver and just see how they, they work just for a little test run. Here's my Futaba receiver. 
I'm going to have to sync that with my transmitter. Okay, so I already have my Stingray designated as another model in my transmitter here. So let me turn the power on my receiver. There it goes. And I have to hold this little button down for a few seconds. There it goes. It's going to blink red. And there we go. It's now linked. That was easy. So we'll turn it off again and we'll plug in our servos. Okay, so since this guy is going to be a throttle, he's going to go in number three. That one. And let me see, I'll just use this one. I'll pretend that this one is my elevator. I'll just pretend it's my elevator and I'll put it in two here. And here we go. All right. So there's my throttle. And then I think I said my elevator. Yeah. So I'll test all my servos to make sure they're functioning, obviously, before I stick them in the plane. And then I did touch upon this earlier, but I noted here on the package or on the box how it doesn't have airplanes listed in the applications. But here on the website, and I've seen these, I've seen these used on planes. I've looked at, I've looked them up, and people are using these all all the time on planes. It says right here um, for those larger sport planes or monster trucks. So I'm not really sure if it's just a typo or what on the box. They just forgot to include it, but here it, here it is again, a sport plane. Well, lots of planes for that matter. So yeah, I'm not really sure why on the box it doesn't include planes, but go figure. What about this guy? Yeah, this one does have aircraft and the other type of your helicopter, your cars, your boats. But yeah, interesting. They must Maybe they just accidentally left it off somehow. So that is that. And in my next video of this build series, I'm going to be cutting out and constructing the servo mounting bays for the elevator and the rudder right back here in the tail section. And the reason I'm moving these all the way back here, and I think I mentioned it in my last video, was because to help balance out the plane better. Because this plane was not designed or made for the bigger gas engines, that's, an, that's something that was added later as an option. And it's noted here in the, in the instructions for the kit that if you are using a gas plane setup, because it tends to be heavier, because you have, not only do you have is the engine big, but you have an additional battery and you have the ignition system in that, that it ends up adding you know, some more weight to the nose. And in the instructions, they suggest to put some put these guys in the back here to help kind of distribute some of that weight toward the back of the plane. And that's what I'm going to do. So that'll be the next video in this build series. So until then, thanks as always for watching. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.